The following is a Candlepin Stars and Strikes rebroadcast featuring some of our most memorable programs. Stars and Strikes Double! Park Place Lanes at Wyndham, featuring outstanding Campbellton bowlers from all over New England. Stars and Strikes Doubles is produced in conjunction with the New Hampshire Campbellton Bowling Association. And now your hosts, Doug Brown and Dan Murphy. Hi everyone, once again from Park Place Lanes here in Wyndham, New Hampshire. Welcome back. Stars and Strikes Doubles about to get underway. Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy and this is semi-final week. And uh, so far, nobody's been able to win two in a row here in this ladies' doubles competition. No, I'm sure that uh, Debbie and Tony are going to try to do something about that and start a streak of their own. But uh, last week, both bowlers didn't bowl exceptionally well, but it was enough to win. I think they're going to have to put a little bit more offense up today. All right, let's meet our two teams. First of all, looking for their second win in a row, our number three-seeded team, first from Epping, New Hampshire, Debbie Regan, and her partner from Pennacook, New Hampshire, Tony Austin. Okay, and Debbie comes in averaging 120. Her roll-up score was 618. Tony at 108 and 582. And last week, they were able to knock off uh, Judy Witcher and Joanne Vandiver as they rolled a 348 triple uh, to get that win. So now they're looking for two in a row, and they will face our second-seeded team made up of Lynn Perrin from Manchester, New Hampshire, and her partner from East Kingston, New Hampshire, Kathy Fuller. Okay, Lynn comes in averaging 110. Her roll-off score, 618, and Kathy comes in at 109 and 583. And, of course, we're going to have uh, third-place money on the line for the runner-ups in this match as uh, that will they will split $250. The winners, of course, will go into our championship match next week against our top-seeded team of Janet Pock and Janice McIntyre. Three strings of ladies' doubles candle pin bowling. We're going to get it underway here on Stars and Strikes Doubles right after this timeout. Don't go away. So it's Debbie Regan and Tony Austin in that number three spot looking for their second win in a row, facing Lynn Perrin and Kathy Fuller in the number two spot. And next week, Janet Pock and Janice McIntyre come in. Here's Debbie Regan. On the head pin, but a little full. 2 4 7 left and the 6 10 on the right. Oh, oh, yes. That's... How about that for our start to the match? Very nicely done. Actually, the three pin, just enough to catch the wood in between the 6-10 to spin that around, knock the last two pins down. Oh, and a nice pocket hit, and look what she's left with, the 5-7. One more time. Doesn't seem fair somehow. Well, what she do is just cut her right over. <laughs> oh. Watch out. Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, and again almost. A 27 opening pair for Debbie Regan. And pretty sharp, both of those boxes. Yes. Made one cut shot and very nearly made the 5-7. Now our first look at Lynn Perrin, her first appearance on Stars and Strikes. The rookie team. That's right, the all-rookie team. All-rookie team. Well, I don't know if we've seen this one before. Three, four, five, six. Man, there's oh, a nice cut 10. shot for a 10. All right. A couple of fine shots already here. The lady's showing us how it's done. Splits the two, three and the six and gathers in the two pin for the nice 10. Lynn and her husband Rod live in Manchester, New Hampshire. Lynn works as a secretary at Sanders. Does a lot of her bowling at both Lakeside and the Londonderry Bowling Center, and she leaves a solid eight pin. And everything else went into the pit. All nine pins went into the pit, and it's still there. 
Pair of tens. And it's a seven pin advantage for Regan and Austin after two boxes. And here is Tony Austin. Tony just sliding by the head pin to the left. See if she started a half a step or almost a full step closer to the foul line, that ball would have hit the head pin. Come up and touch it. Remember, of course, next Sunday, starting at 12 noon, championship week here on Stars and Strikes. At noon, it'll be the men's singles championship match between Mike Morgan and Tom O'Brien, the winner to advance to the Tri-State Megabox Tournament of Champions as our fourth qualifier. And then next Sunday at 1 o'clock, the Ladies' Doubles Championship, the winners of this match against Janet Pock and Janice McIntyre. Tony's on the head pin this time, leaving the 5 and the 10, though. But she's got some help, as you heard from the crowd behind me. If she's on the 5 pin, the wood should carry the 10. Oh, Just like that. Beautiful shot. Beautiful shot. Now our first look at Kathy Fuller. Kathy, like her partner Lynn, making her first appearance here on The Winds. But it's not the first time for the family. No. Uh, Kathy's husband, Brian, has been here previously. They have a son, Brian. Live in East Kingston, New Hampshire. Opens up with a nine box. Kathy works as a baker for Shaw's Supermarket. Did she bring us anything today? I haven't seen anything yet, no. but uh, you know, there's always time. <laughs> Two, four, ten left for Kathy. Gonna try to split the two and the four. Too far left. It'll be a nine, 38 through four for the team of Perrin and Fuller. So Regan and Austin trying to make it two wins in a row, have the early lead. Debbie Regan steps up working on the spare left by her partner, Tony Austin. Just catching the head pin and taking seven. And the three, the five, and the 10. Piece of wood in between the three and the five. Not quite. Sixty-three half. Okay, right back on him here. Now she's missing the eight pin. Hmm. And Debbie's the only one that caught it. <laughs> She's going to get them all. Oh, that re-rack paid off, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Can't knock all ten of them down if you don't have ten of them up there to begin with, right? <laughs> Big strike in the sixth. <laughs> Some of the other bowling, uh, that other game there, you have to request a re-rack. That's right. Well, I think they'd probably give you one if there weren't enough pins standing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes, though, with uh, with ten pin, the difference is they 
the uh, the pins are not set in the same spot every time. Because, of course, with the pin setters, uh, you would be able to better explain this than I, but the pin setters in 10-pin are constructed so that if you move a pin off the spot, it will be picked up and then placed back placed down back where you put it, yes, not, right. not on the spot, necessarily. Right. So if, uh, if the alignment is a little off in the original rack, you can... Uh, Missing the 8-pin again. You can uh, have a situation where in 10-pin, the original rack just doesn't look right, and that's why the bowlers will often request a re-rack because they just won't like the way the pins look when they're up there. Debbie just looked at us like, well, I just request that re-rack. <laughs> <laughs> well, an eight pin drop. It looked like a good ball going in. But the seven eight remain for Lynn Perrin. May have a chance to drive this wood back though. She's going to come up high in it. It's got a shot at it. Mm. Not quite. Well, the team of Perrin and Fuller pinning well, but they're still looking for their first mark. And the deficit continues to mount. Tony Austin now stepping up on a strike left by her partner. And that's a pretty good looking ball right there. But she leaves the 6-8. She's got a piece of wood behind the six, so if she was to pinch that on the right-hand side, the wood behind it will help it jump toward the eight pin. Oh, mm. the ball almost carried over there. Maybe a ten. Oh, that almost looked like that would have made it also. <laughs> Uh, Tony right on the head pin again, but that time straight through the middle for the spread eagle. And again. Six box, 98 through eight. Kathy Fuller. Up next, Kathy rolled a 583 to qualify for the show. That left her in eighth place overall, which resulted in her being paired with the number three bowler, and that was Lynn Perrin with a 618. Kathy looking at the 1610. Try to catch the head pin, and that close mm. to making the spare. Still looking for their first mark. But they're maintaining concentration, getting the tens and a couple of nines, so 68 through 7 without a mark. That ball looked like it just flattened out after she released it. It looked like it had the normal break for her from right to left, and then didn't it happen. Just for it her. just <laughs> stayed straight. Yeah. Well, this may be the first box other than than a nine or a ten for the team. It'll be a seven, and the lead is twenty-three. Got big finish here. Come on. Debbie leaves the one and three. She's going to watch the wood a little bit. Waiting for it to settle down. And she'll attempt to convert the one and the three for another spare. And there it is. Make it count. There you go. Just catching the head pin. Pushes the head pin into the three pin. That's all it takes. Now the fill. That was the fourth mark for the team. Crossing over and just three. Okay, 
Oh, <laughs> not quite enough to carry the four and the seven. And it'll be a nine for a 120. 120 for Regan and Austin. Pretty good opening game. Benefit of four marks, three spears, and one strike. Now Lynn Perrin for her final two of this first game. Still looking for their first mark. That looks good going in. Wow. But again, Boy. crossing over in that one two, and you don't get the benefit of the ball slicing through the pins. It goes right to the left side wall. Both Lynn and Kathy have had first ball action that has troubled them a little bit. Balls that have looked a little bit better going in than they turned out. Eighty-five through nine. Final frame. Well, here's a spare leave. Ironically, this time they missed the head pin, <laughs> and they got probably the best spare leave they've had the whole game. The one, the two, and the four. That yeah, looks pretty good. It is. Oh, that's got to be a nice lift to get that first mark out of the way in this game. Yeah, there's a conversion of that spare. They don't seem to be panicking, though. They're pinning well. Like one seven box, two nines, and all the rest tens. And then finally that... Spear in the 10th. And this will cut into the deficit. And with a little extra action, it'll be a 7 and a 102. So 18 pins the lead for Debbie Regan and Tony Austin after one game. Two more upcoming here on Stars and Strikes Doubles. Don't go away. <laughs> Kathy Fuller will start game two here on Stars and Strikes Doubles. Our ladies format and this trying is semi-final week. Trying to build on that mark that Lynn put up the last frame. Catch a little bit of momentum here in the match. Come on. Got a chance. Oh, leaving the four pin. Down by 18, yet they are outmarked four to four to one. There's the benefit of that third ball and getting a few extra pins. Yeah. Well, you got to feel like they're in fairly good shape considering what things might have been. You get one mark in the string and get a 102. That's not. Uh, that's still a pretty good effort. Uh, big first ball this time for Kathy. Leaves the seven pin. Yeah, here's a confidence builder for Kathy if she can nail this seven pin down for the spare. She's going to have to wait a little while though because that wood is still rolling. That's getting critical right now, too. You, well, she's got room to get by, but not much. Going to be a delicate shot, trying to avoid the wood. Well, maybe the ball will come off the wall. Yes! yes. <laughs> <laughs> sure it will. Again, speed of the ball, uh, well, I was the just, key there. I was just thinking the same thing, Doug. Somebody was throwing the ball a little harder. That might not have happened for Tony Austin back in the 1-3 pocket. Drop of six. Two, five, seven, eight. With wood that makes it interesting and makes it makeable. Mark number five for the team. Right back on the head pin again, nine drop. Uh, she's starting to throw the ball. She's in a little more at ease. I remember her in the mixed doubles of several weeks ago. The first string or so, she was just really timid. And then all of a sudden, she lost the match, her and her partner. But she seemed to settle down in the match as the match got, got going. And then she's doing the same thing today. Lynn Perrin now trying to build on the spare left by Kathy Fuller. She's on the head pin, and she's got an oh eight boy. drop. But look at that. Well... You've seen these two pins go out many, many times. Those are the two that you remove for the half Worcester right, the three and the nine. It's a tough shot, though, for the spare. You Early have to throw is. the ball straight into it and, or get a favorable kick off the wall. Right. 
then we'll move over to lane 31 here at Park Place Lanes. Going for the triangle, got it. It looks so easy, but it isn't. You know, I, I really detest that triangle, <laughs> I'll tell you. It always seems to, I'd rather shoot at the diamond. Off target for Deb, but she drops five. Four horsemen plus the nine pin. That was the fill on a spare. One, three, six, nine, ten. Ten box. Well, right now they've added seven more pins to that lead. But Debbie opposite a mark here in the fourth. Yes. Right in the pocket. Oh. If it falls to the left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's going to take the seven pin. But it doesn't, and this leaves her a difficult shot. I don't know if they turned enough so she can go straight back with it or not. But yeah, it to be right around the red line and drive it back. Oh, mm. It wasn't frozen, so it jumped right over. Ball went one way, piece of wood went the other, and four seven still are there. Nine box, and we will take a break. The team of Regan and Austin in the lead. We're just at about the halfway point. Stars and strikes doubles. Don't go away. Kathy Fuller now to fill the spare left by her partner, Lynn Perrin. Crossing over for a five drop. Much like Debbie Regan, Kathy stands to the extreme right of the approach. for the head pin. Gets out with, with eight. 60 at the halfway point. And that one oh bites boy. through to the middle of the lane and wouldn't you know it, it's the 1-5 chop out. That's tough to do. She got half of them. The runners up in this match split third place prize money of $250. And that's a pretty nice out by Kathy with the nine. The winners move on to the championship match next week. And the prize money next week, 800 to the champions, 400 to the runners up. Tony Austin now. Working with the lead. Seems like we've seen the four horsemen a lot in this match already. But it seems like you don't often see it made. <laughs> no. It really has become one of the more difficult, legitimate spare leaves that you have. You see the replay of that 10 just knocking the head pin down into the 10 pin. Used to be the old wooden pins that that shot the four horsemen would go if you split them. Now it's almost, it played almost on the outside. Oh, how about this? Ooh. Tony gave that a run, the 4-7 on the left, the 6-10 on the right. It's a 
the nine box. The lead is 21. Lynn Perrin. Our next taping session here on Stars and Strikes Doubles will be this Thursday, February 13th. Thursday the 13th. We'll be taping a men's doubles series with the winners of that, of course, moving on to the Tournament of Champions. And we will begin at about 9.30 on Thursday morning and continue through till about 4 o'clock in the afternoon. So at any time during that time frame, if you're in the neighborhood, we'd love to have you come on in and say hello. Always love to meet uh, viewers to the program, especially those of you who get down here to visit for the first time. We're at Park Place Lanes, Route 28 in Wyndham, New Hampshire, just off Route 93, exit 3. Take Route 111 east to Route 28 north. Just a couple of hundred yards on the right. That's where you'll find us, and you'll find us here on Thursday, February 13th. A couple of eights for Lynn Perrin. So an opening for Debbie Regan to add to the lead. Nope, she'll shoot at the two, five, seven, eight. A piece of wood in there that should help with the nine, uh, seven and the eight anyways. But gotta have the three. Well, she does, drove the wood straight back, still at least looking at the five, seven. Can gain another one in count or two if she's Fortunate enough to get both of these. Mm. Matches the eight box instead. So the lead stays at 21. Looking to catch it inside for the spare, oh. and the 10 pin wobbles but stays. Actually moved it a little bit, but didn't get quite enough push to knock the 10 pin down. She'll get it for a 10. Gain a couple in count. Lead now 23. Kathy Fuller. And again, right through the center. Got a shot. Oh, just sliding by the three. Team of Perrin and Fuller has been trailing right from the start in this match. They were trailing by as many as 26 at one point. have just three marks in the match. Once again, looking for a little 10th frame thunder here. I like that, 10th frame thunder. <laughs> thunder. <laughs> Let's see. No, the eight and the 10 in the back. It's a 9 and a 103 for a 205 total. Tony Austin missing the head pin. Chance for the team of Austin and Regan to really extend the lead here going into the third game. Oh, almost. The eight pin stays, but both teams had marks early. 
Regan and Austin start out the first two boxes. Tony Austin put two marks up. Perrin and Fuller had a mark in the second and the fourth. And since then, no bullet in either team has had a mark, strike or spare. That's a nine. Yeah, one on the bottom here. Tony is through the middle, looked a little full, but got a break. Everything on the right side got destroyed. Even the 10 pin was the last one to go, and she's looking at the 4 7 and converts that for a spare. Gives them 109 plus the ball. So the lead 24 plus this fill, so this could push it over 30. And it does with a nine drop, 118, and a 238 for the team of Regan and Austin. A 33 pin advantage here in semifinal week. One game to go. We'll be back in a minute. Debbie Regan will start game three. Lane 32. up just short of the head pin. Last string, uh, Tony Austin was the one that got the three marks. Started with two and finished with one. It's a nine. Nice break on a full hit that time, leaving the 6-10. And as I mentioned before with Kathy up there, extreme right hand side of the approach for, for Debbie, and it's difficult, anything to the right. She managed to get one of them, but left the 10 pin. Well, it's nine. That'll be a nine box. So a couple of nines for Debbie Regan. Debbie's lobbying for a rule change, I think. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> Can't lobby for something that obvious. <laughs> Lynn Perrin almost converting for a spare. And that That's will nice. also be a nine. Well, now Lynn Perrin will have something to shoot at. The one, two, and four. Slid by the head pin. That's the that, one she wanted. Uh, that was the ball. So two boxes down. Well. More fall as I look down at the score pad here. I think we all looked away and, <laughs> and found out. Three nines.
This time the 1, 2, 4, and 10. Just slid by. Four nines. Well, this leaves another opening for the team of Perrin and Fuller. Trailing by 32. One, two, four, six, ten. No wood. Come on, Got a shot. Oh, oh yeah. Nice shot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's the head pin. Go down and take out the six, ten. Right there. Good shot by Kathy Fuller. Oh, right Needs back in a the big full. Wow. Deserved better. Got the big fill, but unfortunately it's the 5-10 left. Can be cut over, but very difficult shot. Well, that will cut into the lead, heading into the final six boxes. She'll take a nine, and the lead will be 23 for Regan and Austin with six frames to go. So there's still time here in semifinal week. We'll be back on Stars and Strikes Doubles. On, the team of Regan and Austin with the lead in the match, but they have yet to get a mark here in the third game. I don't think they're going to get another nine, <laughs> in one way or another. <laughs> That'll be a ten. Well, they're hanging on here, but 23 pin advantage, and they're still looking for the first mark this third game. Yeah, I have a feeling it'll take marks to uh, preserve this win. Off target again. Debbie just turned oh, away from out. that one, but turn back, Debbie. It's not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't see much of it, but uh, it didn't turn out too badly. <laughs> well, she clips the head pin. The way the wood's situated there, she'll better than an average chance of making it. Oh. Fortunately, the averages weren't in her favor. So it'll be two more open frames. Lynn Perrin will get to work on. And two marks with decent fills, and we're pretty close. Nine box. All right, two very critical boxes here for Lynn Perrin. Lost that one to the left. Last week I mentioned that Janet Park winning the Pro Tour event in Portsmouth. I haven't got the results yet, but I believe that Lynn Perrin was runner-up in that tournament. Nate losing two pins in count. The lead 25, as you see, in the lower left. 25 pin to make up. You need three marks more than your opponent, so you haven't got many boxes left. There's, oh, a there's big one. one. Strike in the sixth. Well, that could be critical. Well, as we always say, when there's one, there could be many more. That's the first strike for the team of Perrin and Fuller. Tony Austin now for her final two, and wow, what an ugly leave that is. Triangle, triangle on the right, three, five, six, uh, diamond, I should say. I never was very good in geometry. <laughs> <laughs> three, five, six, and nine. And since I was able to get it out, the three and nine are gone, and now the five, and 
What it boils down to is a eight box. <laughs> that was a lot of work for that eight box, wasn't it? <laughs> for me, anyways. <laughs> Four horsemen right, the eight in the back. The wood, well, the wood probably won't be a factor, although it's possible for Tony to clip the head pin and the wood at the same time. Nope. So it will be two more open frames, and it's getting interesting. Well, Kathy Fuller now comes up for her final two, working on a strike. And if she were able to put up even one mark in these two boxes, this could get very interesting here. Right oh, the it's a double! Look at that! Look at that. <laughs> We've How said it time that? and time again. It looked to me like it was going to be full. The last minute seemed just dead in the 1-3 pocket, and it was just a matter of time if the 5-pin was going to go or not. It does for the double. Now the big ball. Oh, no. oh. want to punch out. And it was almost a half Worcester, but it turns out to be a 3. We're going to be very close. Well, right now, the lead is just two. And now it's one. <laughs> A one-pin match with two boxes to go after all that. Do you believe it? Unbelievable. Critical 10 right there. It was. It really was. He picked up another, she picked up another one in count. Now, Debbie Regan for her final two. Regan and Austin lead by one. Going to the final two frames. One, three, and nine left for Debbie. Yes. Ooh, just sliding by to the right of the head pin. Now all these pins are real crucial. If she were to get two tens, of course the other team needs at least one mark to beat them, but. All right, come on, one on the end, right here, come on. Well, if she were to get a 10 in this last box, that would still be true. I'm sure Debbie is not even thinking about that. She's thinking about a mark. The team has really struggled. They've had only one mark in the last 17 boxes. Well, if she wasn't to fail to convert this, convert this to a spare, they should be thinking about it. <laughs> Four horsemen right, one, three, six, ten, with the eight pin in the back. Looks good. Looks Does it good? Carry? Yes! What a time for a shot. That's Debbie Regan's first mark since the first string. And it comes in the last box of the match, maybe. <laughs> and always a tough spare with the four horsemen, plus the, the eight pin. I say maybe because maybe it won't be the last box of the match. Oh, oh and a spread eagle on the fill. Well, you know they need another mark. Debbie would like a bigger fill, of course, to make him throw the mark and then really have to fill it. Well, Perrin and Fuller will have to come up with a 128 to tie, 129 to win. So 24 pins to tie, 25 to win. Lynn Perrin on the line. Well, she's on the head pin, hit the run, right one. She's going to go after the three and the six, try to cut the three into the four, seven. Whoa, good try. Yep, she'll have another chance to get a mark in the tenth. Of course, these two pins are important because they could help take the pressure off if she does mark in the 10th. 114. So she needs a mark with a 4 to tie, a mark with a 5 to win it. Deep breath there by Lynn. Oh, just missed the head pin, but watch out. Well, oh boy. Oh Let's see what this wood does now. It's that wood is in play. Uh, Joe's going to take a look, but I know it's in play because it just, just fell backwards. Yeah. He'll stop halfway down, I think. Yeah. Well, she's got a clear shot at it. She can go right after the two pin. She must mark to keep the match alive. There it is. Well, Comes down to the final ball. Four to tie, five to win. My, oh, my. 
Who would ever thought? Eats five. Oh, she pulled it left. Turned it over, but and got it. Got enough. Lynn Perrin and Kathy Fuller come from 33 pins down in the third and final game, and they win it. 132 for Perrin and Fuller, a three string total, 337. Good enough for a four pin win over Regan and Austin. We'll be back to talk to the bowlers and set up next week's championship matchups in a minute. Well, the applause is for uh, our runner-up team just coming up a little bit short. What a great finish, though, here on Stars and Strikes Doubles. Debbie Regan and Tony Austin, uh, we have the uh, $250 third-place uh, prize money for you to share, and I know that's uh, not what you were looking for, especially going into that third game, but we just couldn't seem to buy a break there in the third. No, I think it was Lynn's father. <laughs> because he was cheering against me. I know. Is that, is that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He always cheers for me, and he was cheering against me. Well, also, it uh, it doesn't help either when when the team you're you're trying to keep away is uh, throwing a double strike. That really made a big difference. Yeah, it really did. They did great, and we did, had a bad luck string. That's it. Well, we appreciate both of you being here, and uh, congratulations on the win last week, and we hope to see you again. Thanks. All right, Thank Debbie Regan and Tony Austin, and now let's bring up Kathy Fuller and Lynn Perrin. Come on up. As uh, it's time to talk to the winners here, and uh, what a comeback. That was uh, quite exciting at the end. Slide right in here close so that we can get you on camera. And uh, that, was a, that was a terrific comeback. Uh, the double strike, obviously, was, was the key. <laughs> <laughs> you're speechless, I know, because you can't believe it, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that really was the critical uh, point in the match, though, and it gave you guys really the ability to come back and have a chance in the last two. Yep. Gave us some incentive, and, and Debbie, I pay my father more than you do, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously, uh, your your thoughts as you went into that 10th box, you knew what you had to do. And yeah, do or die. Yeah. Give it all you got. Yeah. And then uh, the last ball, just keep it in the middle of the lane, I guess you're thinking, right? Please, God, don't <laughs> let me fall down, that's all. <laughs> well, you managed to stay standing, and uh, you'll stand for another week because we've got uh, a championship match for you next week against Janet Pock and, uh, and Janice McIntyre. We're looking forward to it. We'll see you then. Yeah. All right, thanks very much. Congratulations. And uh, we'll take a look at the ladder one more time because we've got our championship match coming up next week. Of course, uh, here on Stars and Strikes Doubles at 1 o'clock next Sunday afternoon, it'll be the top two seeded teams, as it turns out, as it'll be Lynn Perrin and Kathy Fuller against Janet Pock and Janice McIntyre, uh, a repeat of really what happened in the men's singles uh, format. We'll have the top two seeds there, too. In fact, in each series, uh, nobody's been able to win more than one match. So uh, next week at 12 noon, it'll be uh, uh, Tom O'Brien and he will uh, try and uh, make it two in a row as he moves into the championship match. And uh, the same is true for Lynn Perrin and Kathy Fuller, but that was a terrific comeback. Yeah, who do we give the advantage to then? The new team coming in, or, <laughs> or is the streak going to be broken, somebody's <laughs> going to win two in a row? Well, you have to tune in next week and find out. I guess so. Next Sunday at 12 noon, we'll have two hours of championship Sunday here on the Winds, and we hope you'll join us then. Until then, for Dan Murphy and the whole crew, Doug Brown, so long from Park Place Lakes. <laughs>